homeopathy is not herbal medicine. It is not vitamins and supplements. It is not many forms of natural medicine. It's a very, very specific mm -hmm. form of medicine that has a history of about 200 years. Uh, it was developed in Germany, uh, invented really, or discovered is a more accurate term, by a uh, physician mm -hmm. at the end of the 18th century and developed from that point on. Uh, it has its own special form of pharmacology and its own uh, principles of cure, principles of um, potency, and um, has his own special way of diagnosing and uh, treating people. Mm -hmm. Homeopathy originally, when Samuel Hahnemann, the discoverer of homeopathy, uh, first started to use it, uh, was really used mostly to treat very uh, acute epidemic diseases. Mm -hmm. The first people he treated were actually um, suffering from scarlet fever hmm. and uh, he used it both to treat people who were actively experiencing scarlet fever and also used it as a prophylactic to prevent people uh, from getting uh, scarlet fever. He was very successful with that mm -hmm. and since that time actually it's been used a lot for epidemics. Hmm. Uh, it was used, it became popular in the United States. The real spread of homeopathy in the United States was due to the fact that uh, there were cholera epidemics in the 1830s, mm -hmm. which had actually been brought over by immigrant populations. And uh, they had been brought over from Europe. And it was fairly well untreatable in this country at that time, given the type of uh, treatments available. Uh, today it's uh, antibiotics would oftentimes take care of it. Mm -hmm. But homeopathy had very, very uh, powerful uh, positive results. About 70% mm -hmm. of the people treated with cholera, for cholera were uh, successfully uh, cured, whereas uh, the conventional practitioners of the time lost about 70% of their patients. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's actually quite easy to document. Mm -hmm. Um, so it spread from, from that point on, and many physicians practicing in this country at the time converted to homeopathy from the various schools of, of medicine. There was no one unified school of medicine. What mm -hmm. we think of as medicine today, conventional medicine, yeah. standardized treatment, uh, standardized education didn't exist at the time. Mm -hmm. you know, surgeons were basically barbers, and some people were using American Indian medicines, and some people were using things they'd learned from. So is this like in the late 1800s? No, this is the 1830s. Okay. 1830s or so that it, it came to this country. Originally, it was brought over by, uh, uh, by German immigrants mm -hmm. um, in the Pennsylvania what we think of as Pennsylvania Dutch or really Pennsylvania Deutsch okay. uh, <laughs> territory. And so okay. it was, uh, Philadelphia was the traditional stronghold of homeopathy. Huh. Until recently, there was actually the Hahnemann Medical College. Uh, Hahnemann is the name of the founder of homeopathy. That college still exists, but only recently did they change the name. Huh. So homeopathy went through a tremendous growth spurt, and by the turn of the century, turn of the you know, 20th century, um, there were over 20 medical colleges which taught homeopathy exclusively and, really? and uh, many, many hospitals were using uh, homeopathy uh, exclusively. The University of Michigan Medical School, University of Boston Medical School, they were all homeopathic. Really? Yeah, medical schools. Wow. And uh, that, con that uh, continued until Starting in the 19-teens, really, mm -hmm. things started to switch around. There was a very well-known report called the Flexner Commission, and they decertified homeopathic uh, colleges. And by the 1940s, there were very few practitioners. Mm. But around 1900, that one in every four medical doctors in this country was a homeopath. Mm. But the uh, uh, interesting uh, note is that the American Medical Association was created in the 1840s 
as a trade union to protect against the homeopaths because yeah. homeopaths were becoming so popular uh -huh. that they felt the, what was at that time called the old school practitioners, i.e. the people who were doing conventional medicine mm -hmm. at the time, they felt a need to band together to fight against the homeopaths. And so there was, right from the beginning, there was a, a very strong sort of protectionist mm -hmm. feeling to the AMA to protect their turf and to keep the homeopaths from taking over everything. Hmm. So there's always that dynamic, which today continues. Mm-hmm. <laughs>